All right, so for this video, I'm gonna talk about expectations versus reality for my first instrumentation and electrical job. And the job I'm gonna talk about was technically my second job. I started as a intern while I was in school and about a year into my college education, I got a full-time job as an instrumentation and electrical technician at a water plant in Florida. And again, uh, I just want to go over expectations versus reality. By the way, I'm trying to get this channel monetized. I'd appreciate if you guys could subscribe and watch my videos. I'm about a third of the way there as far as watch time hours to start getting checks from YouTube, and I would really appreciate it. So I got a couple things written down here. Um, my first expectation versus reality is that not everything is complicated. So I went to school and I learned all this stuff about electrical theory and different types of instruments and control systems. And I, I got to the job and I started seeing that a lot of the things I would fix would just be like tightening up a wire or sometimes just like looking at things and figuring out how they work. And um, I wasn't always using the stuff I used in school. Now that would come up sometimes where I'd have to kind of fall back on my knowledge of usually it was physics and electrical theory when things got wrong to try to figure out how things work and how to fix them. But a big part of the job is just doing things like replacing batteries, replacing fuses, tightening up loose wires, um, ordering new parts and in installing them. So I was expecting, I, I guess I was sort of expecting more engineering, but, and I was expecting the, the job to be at a higher level and most of the job, like 80 or 90% of the time, I really didn't need like a very high uh, scientific level to troubleshoot what was going on and I could handle most of it. And that's good for my second point, it segues into it, I thought they would expect more from me. So I went to school and I learned so much stuff about different types of instruments, electrical theory, physics. I just learned all this science and engineering stuff. And again, I had an internship that I did for a year. I had been in school for a little bit over a year and I was very nervous starting this job. I thought, um, I thought they would expect more from me and at especially like the first few months, I, I had a fear in the back of my head that they were gonna fire me because I wasn't experienced enough. And I didn't know enough. Um, I was really nervous, um, but you know, I was pretty driven and uh, I learned a lot on the job. I had a, a partner who worked with me, he was helpful. And I just kind of had to teach myself this stuff and it actually went pretty smooth. Um, I expected the job to be much more difficult than it was. That being said, it took me a while to learn things, but my expectation, I expected them to expect a lot more from me, but what they really wanted, they just wanted someone that kind of understood electricity, understood instruments, had a little back, bit of background information and like a good, you know, trouble troubleshooting mindset. And they just wanted me to try. And if I just show up and try and do my best and fix stuff, the best I could, they were more than happy with that. They actually gave me a plaque, it's over there on the wall. They gave me an appreciation award because I was always trying really hard because I thought I was gonna get fired. Uh, let's see, third point, contractors design a lot of the systems. I thought I was gonna show up at this water plant and they were gonna have like an engineering team and I was gonna be working closely with them and learning from them and I thought there was gonna be a lot more processes and information established within the place that I was working at. And really what it was, was they would hire a contractor, a contractor would come in and build this system, then they'd hand it back over to us. And then a lot of times there wasn't really that many people that understood it or knew it that well. So when it would start breaking, you just kind of go there and figure it out as you go. You, I didn't have like a network of people that understood how everything worked. I kind of had to figure it out on my own and, uh, you know, teach myself. All right, so those are three expectations versus reality that I noticed when I started working. And now I'm just gonna let you guys know, generally speaking, what the job's like. That was a big thing for me is I really didn't know what to expect. It was hard for me to picture you know, actually picture myself at the job. Like I said, I was super nervous. So I'm just gonna give you guys a little bit of information so you kind of know what you're getting into. 
So uh, PMs and emergency maintenance or breakdowns. So PMs are preventative maintenance. Those are things that are scheduled long in advance. Uh, usually you have like an work order management system like SAP, I'll put a little picture of it on the screen somewhere. Um, yeah, so you have your work orders and SAP, and those are scheduled, and you just gotta go out and do them. And being the electrical guy, if there's anything to do with electricity, it's usually you that's doing them. Uh, so like replacing batteries, replacing old parts, anything electrical, you can plan on doing it. And usually PMs are pretty straightforward and they usually have a procedure. And then, um, for emergency maintenance or breakdowns, I mean, obviously that's a little bit different. So you just kind of balance your day between breakdowns and PMs and of course calibrations. Um, so yeah, breakdowns, someone gives you, you know, you're working on your PMs, you're going to replace a battery somewhere and they call you and say, hey, um, so-and-so just said that this machine keeps turning off. So you go over there, you take a look at it, you know, you check the power, um, you open up the panel, you take a look, maybe you have a contactor that's tripping out, maybe there's a loose wire, maybe you smell smoke, maybe there's a burnt fuse. You just kind of poke around and, and look for the issue from an electrical standpoint. There's a lot of things that you can kind of do first that I like to do. I have a group of things that I do first just because it's quick and it solves most of the problems. If that doesn't work, then you gotta start, um, you gotta start figuring it out which brings me to my next thing. Uh, you gotta learn how to teach yourself. So you kinda, as an instrumentation electrical technician, you're not, you're most likely not really gonna be supervised. You kinda just figure out your day. So you might come in on a Monday, maybe you have a little weekly meeting, they talk about what's going on, what they wanna do. You know, you gotta do these calibrations by the end of the week, these preventative maintenances by the end of the week. Maybe you have some projects you're working on and maybe you have some breakdowns that come up. And when those breakdowns happen uh, and you can't figure them out with your own skill set, you gotta bust out the user manual, call tech support. Uh, you gotta figure out how stuff works. A lot of it is figuring out how stuff works. So maybe you get on YouTube and watch a video about how the machine works, read the manual. You gotta be driven in and self-taught. And a, a lot of the job is, it's a very, in, in my experience, it's a very, free job. You're not going to be supervised, really. You just kind of go there and make sure you check all the stuff off your list. Brings me to the last point. You got to set your own pace. And again, I'm just speaking from my experience from the jobs I've had. You kind of set your own schedule and you just handle your business and people will generally kind of leave you alone. Um, and then when breakdowns happen, you got to go and figure them out. So that's like a general overview of what the job's like. Um, it's not rocket science, but sometimes it is. Uh, it's a great job. Again, I hope you guys liked the video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I'm trying to get paid by YouTube. I'm getting there. And uh, thanks for watching my video.